God, we don't take anything lightly, Lord God. God, you was with us all last week, Lord God, no matter the battles, God. No matter what we went through, Father, you was with us, Lord God. And God, even this morning, Lord God, as I came to the throne of grace, even before coming into worship, Lord God, there are so many, Father God, that is seeking directions in this hour, Father God on what to do next, Lord God. But God, according to your word that you have given me in Isaiah 30 and 21, God, you say whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. This is the way, walk in it. Father God, we pray today, Father God, that those, Father God, we have an ear to hear what you are saying to the church today, Father God. And God, even in this season, Lord God, with so much that is going on, Father, God, we trust you, Father God. Oh God, you said, Father God, that we shall lean unto you, Father God, and not our own understanding, Father God, but in all our ways, Father God, if we, Father God, lean to you, God, you would direct our paths, Lord God. So God, on today, Father God, we annihilate frustration, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We come against every distraction, Lord God, that will try to distract us from the assignment that you have given us, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Father, we come against self-doubt today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God we shall do what you have called us to do Father God oh God we thank you God because your word says that greater is he Father God that is in us than he that is in the word Lord God so Father God we thank you for your word Father God we thank you Father that every promise God even though it hasn't come to fruition Lord God that your promises are yes and amen, Father God. So we trust you at your word on today, Father God. And Father, as you begin to bless our worship experience on today, Father God, we know it's already blessed, God, because we came with you on our mind, Lord God. We got up early this morning, Father God, with the agenda of having Jesus on our mind this morning, Lord God. So Father, allow your Holy Spirit to rain fresh on us today, God. Oh God, give us everything that we need on today, Father God. Oh God, let your word Come forth, Father God, and reign on us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And God, even as the worship team comes, Lord God, to glorify you, Father God. Oh God, let us glorify you, Father God, and spirit and in truth, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for what you're going to do in this place, Lord God. We thank you for every child, God, that's in the building today, Father God. Even now, Father God, we ask you to anoint their ears, Lord God, that they will be able to hear and God comprehend on what the word of God is saying to them, God, even in this season, Lord God. We cover our children, Lord God. We pray for a hedge of protection over them, Lord God. Oh God, as they go, Father God, Oh, God, wherever they may go, Father God, we ask that you would give them a Holy Ghost boldness, Father God, to share you, Jesus, to the world, Father God. And God, we thank you because you are in control, Lord God. Your word says that no weapon that is formed against us, God, shall be able to prosper, Father. And your word says every tongue that is risen up against us, you will condemn it, God. We don't have to say a word. We don't have to do anything, Father, because the battle belongs to you, Father. So we thank you, God, that we can rely on you, God, to fight our battles, Lord God. So, God, as you come this morning, Father God, as we come to worship God, let us worship you in unity, Lord God. One band and one sound, Lord God, lifting up the name of Jesus, Lord God, because we know who you are, God. Lifting up your name, Father God, giving you the highest praise on today, God, because it's to you, Father God. And God, every traveler that's on their way, Father God, we pray, Father God, that you would give them traveling mercies, Lord God, that you would block every accident, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would dispatch your angels even now, Father God, that they will arrive safely, Lord God. And we thank you, Father God, that we arrive safely because of who you are, Father. So we thank you, God. So God, have your way in this place today, God. For a very few, Father God, and every breast, Lord God. Let us be attentive to your spirit on today, God. And let us hear what the world, what the Lord is saying to us on today, Father. Anoint our speaker, God, on today, Father God. Give him all that he needs, Father God to lay the word, the foundation, Lord God, that even a baby will understand what you are saying to the church today, God. We thank you in advance, Lord God. Have your way in this place, God. Hey, oh God, we give you full reign, God, and access to 
us today, God. Have your way, God. Full reign and access, huh? Thank you, Jesus. And God, we'll be so careful to praise you. We'll be so careful to lift you up, Father. Oh, God, we thank you, God. And let the church say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalm 24, in verse 7, it says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lift up ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is. The King of glory. Can we just give God a praise there? Father, we welcome you into this building. We welcome you into this place. Father, you are welcome to rest, rule, and abide here. Father, you are welcome to have your way. You are welcome to touch your people. Father God, you are welcome to move among the aisles and the pews and the sections and the rows. Father God, we tell you, oh God, we came ex 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 expecting something this morning. Ex something one expecting something wonderful, gracious and mighty and powerful because you are just that type of God. Father, we came to give your name glory honor and praise we came to lift you up for you are worthy to be praised and so father we say thank you we say thank you in advance we say thank you in advance of the miracles of the signs and the wonders that you shall perform we say thank you in advance for even telling us father that you know our name father you remember our name father you know who we are father one by one father even to the hairs on our head father you have those even numbered father you know us father and there is no doubting in us father that you are the true and living god and so father we worship you father we praise you father we bless you and say come in the room come in the room now come in the room now shake this place shake this place like never before oh father god we lift up our heads on amanda we lift up our heads on amanda and we shake off the dust of yesterday we shake off the off the dust of last year and we say God come on in the room oh God shake us and twist us and move us and push us to our next father oh God when you're bearing oh God may angels even rest here but God may they begin to ascend and descend father oh God have your way father God come in the room oh father God we as your church father we welcome you here we welcome you here. We welcome you here. Father God, because if you don't come, we can't move. If you don't come, God, we, we, we will remain the same. But Father God, I know that you came to change. Oh God, for our minds are being transformed. Our hearts are being transformed by your word, Father. Oh God, that penetrates our hearts, Father. Even the toughest of hearts, Father. Oh, naman, shata, naman, Oh, the chain breaker is here. The chain breaker is here. The chain breaker is here. Oh, God, the chain breaker is here. The chain breaker is here. The chain breaker is here. And we praise you in advance. We worship you in advance. Church, will you begin to lift your voice? Will you begin to lift your voice and clap your hands and welcome in? Welcome in the King of Kings and the Lord of the Lord. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords, the Lord God, strong and mighty. Ah, that's his name, that's his name. And Father, we welcome you here. We welcome you here. We welcome you here. We welcome you here. Father, we won't be ashamed of what you're doing. We won't be quiet about what you're doing. But Father, we came to give you praise. And we came to magnify you. We came to give you praise, glory, and honor. May you shake the building. 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 Ah, for I 
eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what the Spirit of the Lord is going to do. And so, Father, we praise you. We praise you. I want to welcome you to the city of restoration. I want you to feel free to get comfortable in the presence of the Lord and know that whatever you have need of, God is ready to perform it. God is ready to do it. Somebody put your hands together. As our praise and worship comes, I want you to know that whatever you need, God is here. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a praise.
the praise of His glory.
It's your church. It's your church. It's your church. If he called us to it, he will sustain it because it's his church.
sound is liberty and that sound is freedom I don't know about you but sometimes there are things that I hold on the inside and sometimes only a sound can release whatever it is that you are carrying whatever is burdening you down so and on the count of three I'm gonna count to three and I want you to give God a yell from your belly from the depths of your soul and in that yell comes your freedom in that in that yell comes that liberty you've been waiting for things that have been locked up in that yell comes what you've been praying for what you've been asking God for why there is freedom in the room today if you want it so I dare you I dare you if you're not standing please stand with me this morning if you're not already standing and you're able to stand if you're not already standing and you're able to stand, praise the Lord. Now let's stay in this moment. And if you're ready for revival, if you're ready for deliverance, if you're ready for freedom, it's yours this morning. So on the count of three, I want you to give a yell from your belly. Forget about what's next to you. Forget about how you feel in your body. Forget about how you came in this morning. Because the Lord said, when you do this, you won't leave the same way you came in. When you do this, your mind is going to be renewed. Ah, I'm looking for somebody that want to be on fire. I'm looking for somebody that want to be sold out. I dare you. Come on, my mind, I'm on those on fire. So on the count of three, I'm going to count to three, and I want you to give a yell from your belly, from that pit, from that pit, from that low place where that thing you've been holding in, that you've been locking away. Ah, hallelujah. On the count of three, I want you to give a yell. I want you to shake this room. Is that okay? Is that okay? One, two, three. Open your mouth. 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 Open your mouth, Open your mouth and release it. Open your mouth and release it. Open your mouth and release it. Ah, Father, there is a sound in the room. Ah, come on, 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 come on. I'm talking about a sound from your belly. I'm talking about a sound from your belly. I'm talking about a sound from your belly. I'm talking about that sound you've been holding on. That sound you've been holding on to. Release it, release it, release it. Release it, release it, release it. Open your mouth and give God a sound. Open your mouth and give God a sound from the depths of your soul. From the depths of your soul. Way down, way down, deep down. Shake it up, shake it up, shake the room, Father.
Oh, Father, 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 Father. For we say the chain breaker is here. Father God, you are the chain breaker. You are the chain breaker. You are the chain breaker. You are the mind regulator. You are the mind regulator. Ah, where's that sound? Where's that sound? Keep it going. Don't get tired of me. Keep it going. Keep it going. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth and surrender. The Lord said when you open your mouth, it's a sign of surrender. Oh, Father, we break every chain that's been holding us down. Break every chain that's been holding us captive. That doesn't want to let us go. And, Father, we say we give it back to you. We give it back to you. Father, the chain breaker is here. 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 The fire starter is here. The fire starter is here. The fire igniter is here. Ah, he's here. 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 Ah, where's that church we've been talking about? Where's that church from Zion we've been talking about? Open up your mouth, Zion. Open up your mouth, Zion. Open up your mouth. Open. Open up your mouth, open up your mouth, open up your mouth, open up your mouth, open up your mouth. Our Father, the Bakando Santa, release, release that pressure, release that pain, release that agony, release it, release it, release it. And the Lord said, When you do, I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna toss it away. When you do, I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna toss it away. When you do, I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna toss it away, toss it away. Yes, Father, yes, Father, yes, Father. Yes, Father, yes, Father, yes, Father. Yes, Father, yes, Father, yes, Father. Yes, Father, yes, Father. There's still somebody that needs to shake their self. There's still somebody that needs to shake off yesterday and the stains of the past. Oh, Father, we give you the past. We give you the hurt. We give you even our present hurts, even our present shames. We give it to you, Father. Shakatamando Shanda. Oh Father, oh Father. Oh Father, oh Father. We give it to you, we give it to you. We give it to you, Father. We don't hold it hostage. Anamando Shanda. That thing that came evasively, that thing that came and invaded our space, we give it to you. Uh, we didn't ask for it. We didn't ask you to come, but it came anyway. Father, we give it to you. 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 Oh God, we didn't ask for this, but Father, the Father, we took it as our own, and Father, we give it back to you. We give it back. We give it back. We lay it at the altar, and we give it back. Am I talking to a free church this morning? Will you clap your hands and give God a praise in here? Father, we bless you. I'm going to tell you, you don't have to leave the same way that you came. Just as sure as you walked in here with it, you can leave out with it. You can leave out not having it. Praise the Lord. Because there is a chain breaker. There was a chain breaker that is indeed here. And I believe there is much in store for us today. I believe that the man of God has a word. And so we're going to move quickly out of the way. You can have your seat if you can. For your promises are sure. That which you have spoken you shall perform. That which you have spoken, you shall perform. Hallelujah. Fanamando Kandasha. Ganamando Shanda. May there be a spirit of heaviness from your glory that falls in here. 
may there be a spirit of heaviness that fall, the weight of your glory. May it fall in here like never before. Father God, may your spirit rest here and shake us, God, to our core. And Father God, we praise you and give you glory in Jesus' name. Clap your hands for the Holy Spirit one more time. Father, we thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing. We're going to say our vision real quickly. Amen. It's right here to my right and in your left. Our vision is to see God's people empowered in all areas of their lives and to see what was once lost restored. Anybody feel restored today? Hallelujah. Anybody feel restored, rejuvenated, and renewed? Listen, if you want to stay connected to us on a weekly basis, know what's happening here at the city. There are multiple ways to do that. But one way in particular we want to do that is if you want to go ahead and pull out your phones, if you haven't already done so to stay connected to our text messages that come out on a weekly basis, um, go ahead and check t text the word at the at symbol, the at symbol, core squad, core C-O-R-E, S-Q-U-A-D, Core Squad, to the number 81010. Amen. If you haven't already done so, you want to text at Core Squad to 81010. Amen. Amen. Praise God for all of those that were able to show up yesterday for our volunteer training. Amen. I saw pictures and I saw, amen, but just about the whole church showed up. Praise God. Hey man, that's awesome thing when you can get the church to volunteer and everybody on the same page. And so thank God for that, for those that showed up yesterday with Pastor G. We are also recruiting all adults who are interested in dance, amen, in the dance ministry. Whether that is dance, uh, mime, prophetic dance, or similar areas, please join Pastor G today. Somebody say today. Amen. Please join Pastor G today for a brief meeting immediately after service to share some quick information with you all. So if you're interested in dance, mind, prophetic worship, amen, you want to see Pastor G for that. Amen. Amen. All right, now I believe it is giving time. Amen. Giving time. We had to shift that a little bit last week, but we're going to go ahead and share this scripture with you. Acts 20 and 35, it says, as I have showed you, I've showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessing to give than to receive. How many believe that? I'm more blessed when I give than when I receive. Amen. I become an extension of God when I begin to sow and give. Amen. Whether it is that I'm, when I'm receiving. Amen. And so will you please stand with me today? Before we do that, I want you to... Go ahead and stand with me all over the building as we prepare to sow. If we can remember that principle, I believe we will be blessed. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. We have multiple ways to give here at the city. One of the ways is cash app. That's dollar sign, the city of restoration. Amen. Cash app. That's the dollar sign, the City of Restoration. You can also find us on Givelify at the City of Restoration. Just search for the church name and you'll find us, find us there. You can also give by cash or check uh, through here, one of the uh, dispensers. You can uh, uh, set those there. Hey, Amen. There are many of those that give online. If you give in person, you're more than welcome to go ahead and come down the aisle and bring your offering and tithe now. Amen.
praise the Lord. One more announcement. Uh, some, of you have, some of you have been asking. So no bounds have shifted from every second and fourth Sunday to every first and third. Amen. Every first, from every second and fourth to every first and third. If you have not already had a chance to register your child with our check-in system, please see either myself or my wife in the lobby uh, for No Bounds Kid City. Uh, that's uh, Shanae uh, or Marlene out in the lobby, and we can assist you with that. If you have not registered last uh, the last time we did that, uh, feel free to meet us in the lobby. We can give you more information about that. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the offering. Father, we thank you for the offering. We thank you for those that gave. Father God, we thank you for the seed we have placed in the ground. Father God, I pray that you will multiply it, bless it, Father God, and make it run over, Father, to meet every need that we have need of, Father. Bless the giver, Father God, those that chose to get, give, Father. Bless them abundantly, Father God, that they will have more to give next time and more and more, Father God. Oh God, we're decreeing, Father God, more finances in this season and overflow in this season, Father God that our cupboards run over and so father god we pray father god that you will bless it in jesus name we pray amen now could you please help stand to your feet and help me welcome our apostle apostle o'neill salmon praise the lord everybody come on give god that praise i'll say it again give god that praise has done. Amen. Praise God. I'm so excited about what God is doing in this hour. Amen. I'm so hopeful for what he's about to do next. Amen. Praise God for you all. Amen. As I look around and look over this amazing audience this morning, my heart is overwhelmed. Do me a favor. If you are here for the first time, just wave at me. Amen. I don't want to overlook you. Thank you so much for coming, being a part. Any other first, second time, perhaps even. God bless you. Welcome back. Welcome back. Praise God. Amen. I, I can't help but to say, Mitchell family, God bless you. So glad to see you. Amen. And you're in strength. Much better. Praise God. God bless you. Amen. Do me a favor. Go ahead and greet somebody around you. Make them feel welcome. Amen. There's some wonderful people that are sitting by you. Amen. We'd love for you to shake their hand. Give them a fist bump, give them a warm hug whatsoever. Make them welcome. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Don't want to overlook anyone. The Jones, God bless you. Love you guys. Amen. Amen. Lever family, God bless you. I'm starting naming people and I'm going to get in trouble. So I'm going to back away. Amen. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you, sir. Welcome. 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 God bless you. Everybody who's doing, even yourselves, you're making a difference.
can't get my, I, have, I need help to get my knees up. He's in the road doing that. My God. Amen. To God be the glory. Be said if you can. Amen. Just on yesterday, in fact, going back to last week, amen, we had some amazing people, um, um, amen, that decided to be a part of our ministry. I, I know we could reserve this to the end, and I will open it up again for those who are making the decision on today, but they made a decision, amen, then and throughout the week to be a part of this ministry, and I just want to say welcome, amen, to them, amen, uh, Kenya and Aaron. Amen. God bless you. Aaron, God bless you already serving behind the camera. God bless you, Aaron. God bless you. Is Kenya here? Did she make it? Wave at me. Oh, okay. All right. God bless you. Amen. Also working in, in turn. Already serving. Praise God. God bless you. Amen. And um, many of you know that we're getting ready to um, uh, get going on missions once again. At the end of uh, next month, we will be, um, a team here will be uh, going to Nairobi, Kenya. It is our second time in doing so. Whole new team, amen, that I'll be able to take with me, but we'll be serving in Nairobi, Kenya over the course of what is about eight, nine days, round, round about there, amen, going away for about 10 days altogether between the travel and all. And my wife looking at me with a sad face. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But we'll be doing ministry um, there in the region. Um, it has a number of things that will take place throughout. Um, we'll be in, in the course of a day, visiting two schools um, that have opened up their doors to welcome us in. And uh, our time there is to share and to encourage, sort of duplicating what uh, we call here Parents Day, I think, where parents come in and share what they do. But we'll be taking it a little bit further. We'll be given the opportunity, the platform to speak into the lives of those um, young ones. And so uh, we'll be doing that in two different regions, two different schools. But a part of us, um, in us going rather, we'll also be taking some resources um, there, some real uh, needed school supplies. And uh, I'm so thankful several of you have already started to sow, amen, in order to make that happen. Um, I'm so grateful, amen. Um, we'll, we'll be sending off some funds this week to purchase book bags and things of that sort, amen. But again, keep us in prayer on that assignment. Um, in fact, the very next day, um, and for the next two days thereafter, rather, after we accomplish that, we'll be speaking. In, um, to ministers and leaders and pastors um, all throughout um, that are coming all throughout um, the Kenya region and actually beyond that um, I don't know where each city and you know in turn it, uh, finds itself but I've been told several are taking um, a day or two to get where we are and over that time we'll be afforded the opportunity to pour into leaders throughout the region, um, three sessions a day for two days, amen, that's a lot, amen, um, and we're praying God's strength on that assignment, but um, there's much work to be done there, then preaching the next day, amen, you're keeping track, we're about, what, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, the ninth message through, <laughs> the next day preaching, and uh, uh, after such, um, we'll be or in, um, doing some business meetings. I'm thinking of all the things that we have going on. There's so much to be to be had on the weekend. So we just simply pray your strength, amen. And we um, pray that you pray our strength, rather. But also pray for those that are helping us get going. Um, and to each one that would desire to sow to that, we welcome your seed in that. If you so choose to support us, um, it's simple. Just in the com uh, comment section or note section, just write the word missions. We'll know what that means. Um, but we welcome your support. I believe the, the budget is at 5000 I think we're somewhere around 1500 I am not worried about it. I know that God is going to come through. Amen. On that. Amen. So if you can do any part to help us in that, we welcome your support. 
Amen. You can give it uh, through the church's cash app. Again, um, missions is the keynote. Um, you can also give it cash or check today. You're making it out to the city. Amen. Um, whatsoever way you so desire to support, we welcome that. Amen. Is that fine? Amen. Praise God. Wonderful. Amen. Um, let me, oh, I was going to say behind that, amen. Interestingly enough, as we are getting ready to go to Nairobi, Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya decided to show up in the house. Amen. Amen. And for the first time visiting us last week, amen, and then deciding to be a part of the ministry then, amen, and came out on yesterday as well, amen, and we had an awesome time was Anna. I don't know if she made it through the door. Is she here, Anna? No, she didn't make it through. That's all right. She's going to be a little bit behind. All right, that's fine. Listen, we, we thank God for her, but she came in. She resided in, was a resident of, born in that, of Nairobi, Kenya, now a part of the ministry, and I'm so grateful, amen, to have met her. Amen. Praise God. And to have her part of this vision. Amen. With that being said, listen, um, again, the, 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 we're going to open it up at the end for those who would like to connect. Amen. I want to share my heart. Amen. Um, there at the end. But right now, I feel we need get in the word. Is that all right? Amen. Join me in book of Proverbs, if you don't mind. Book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 4. We're going to read uh, verse 25. We're going to start, rather, at verse 25. Amen. If you have not been... Um, able to thus far to connect to our midweek um, Bible studies. It's online. It's via Zoom. Um, the link goes out every week um, on that day in particular concerning how to connect. Amen. But we've been in an amazing time. Amen. And on Wednesdays at 7. So if you can carve out some time just for us to break bread together and fellowship, that would be wonderful. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25, when you have found it, please say amen. Amen. I'm going to give you some time. I know we're going to get it on screen. It's already there. Praise God. That's all right. <laughs> amen. Amen. I'm particularly interested, and we'll be reading the New International Version translation of this particular text. Amen. It says this. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. I'll start again at verse 5. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for this awesome opportunity to break bread one with another. We pray, Holy Spirit, that your spirit will minister through these words. Lord Jesus, oh God, uplift us, strengthen us, feed us today. We thank you for the grace to move forward. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Uh, for, amen, what is our first, our second time at this, amen. Uh, I want to, amen, continue with the thought fo of focus. I want to continue with the thought. I wanted to, in every way, to just continue, uh, or better yet, move beyond it, but the Lord said no. There's still more here to unpack. Amen. And so I want you to nudge your neighbor and say, stay focused. Mm, uh, praise God. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Praise God. Nudge somebody else and tell them, stay focused. <coughs> praise God. Amen. You know, the truth of the matter is when I look over this audience, it's no doubt there are parents here. If, if I happen to identify you, just wave your hand real quickly. Raise it up high. There are parents here. Amen. There are business owners here. Praise God. There are drivers here. There are instructors, teachers here. Amen. There are professionals here. Amen. Praise God. Amen. There are students here. 
Praise God. Amen. To some, uh, to some extent, we're all still learning. Praise God. Amen. There are a great number of people here, and I can continue to identify, amen, who you may be in the room. The truth of the matter is, amen, irregardless of who you are, amen, and, and what you do, what is required of you is focus. Somebody say, I must remain focused. Mm, my God. If you ever drive, amen, you know how essential it is to have focus being behind the wheel. Amen. Praise God. You know how of a necessity it is to maintain focus. Anything can happen. In the split, a split decision can be made and you need to know how to respond. And if we lose our focus, what happens often is we tend to react. Praise God. We tend to just move without thought in turn to consider in part what is around us when we are not focused. Praise God. Um, I have begun, uh, I began wearing glasses, glasses around the age of nine. Amen. And, and my wife this week, amen, for those of you watching us, trolling us <laughs> on uh, social media, amen, amen, that our friends with us in part, I, she, she decided to take a quick clip of her wearing glasses, amen, and I, I applauded her, amen, I said, welcome to the Four Eye Club, amen, <laughs> praise God, it's what it is, amen, when I was young, glasses wasn't cool, now people put it on and have no prescriptions, Oh, Jesus. Y'all know it's the truth. Everybody want to be the nerd now. Everybody, that's what it is. Praise God. Back in the day, you, you couldn't help. I, I found every reason to not have it on. Amen. So when she put it on, I was like, all right, I see you. You can see me now, can't you? <laughs> Amen. Uh, but being the fact, or given the fact that I've worn glasses for much of my life, most of my life, in fact, um, I realize how vital, how essential it is to have focus because without it, things don't appear as they should be. When you've lost your focus, I'm already preaching, things don't appear as they should be. When you lose your focus in life, when you lose your focus in relationship, praise God, watch this, the first one, the vertical one. Things don't appear as they should be. You don't see as you should. And in turn, things become blurry. Praise God. And if things are at bay, for the most part, for most of us, it, it is void of the details. Have you ever noticed when something is out of focus, you miss the details? Oh, my God. God is in, catch this, the details. And we can miss the details when things are out of focus, when we're distracted, when we're not given to what it is or in part aware of what it is that God is about and what he's doing. Isn't it amazing that when it is that you are on your own agenda, when you're about doing what you want to do and give no thought to doing, you get it done easily for the most part. But when it is that you have been commissioned or committed to doing what has been asked of you, how it causes you to want to hone in, focus, and but it's at that very moment distractions come. Have you ever noticed in part that you are well to do up until the moment you decide to do? Oh God, oh, I gotta stay, I gotta stay focused, I gotta stay focused in between or behind rather the wheel. It is to a detriment as well that I must say, and many of us can agree on this, especially those who drive at best, you can be behind the wheel, get to your destination, but in retrospect, looking back, begin to question how did you get there because you weren't present 
in mind along the way. And you can miss, how many have ever missed an exit? Caught up in your, ain't it painful? It is painful. Oh, it's painful. Going to my home um, where I live, or I live in Sun City Center and there's the Sun City exit for those who go south. If you miss the Sun City exit, you are driving on a whole different mission. Your mission is get to the next, and then it's an atrocity to then regard once you get there, you've got to do the U-turn and go all the way back. I made a mistake on 275 once years back. I'm not familiar with all too well with um, Florida, I would say. Uh, but nonetheless, that was not the excuse. The truth of the matter, I had the instructions, but I got caught up in a conversation. And in that conversation, I missed the exit going to the airport. And I'm pressed for time. And when you miss the airport exit, there's a whole nother city and a bridge to cross and then got to navigate a place called Elmerton, the road called Elmerton and then drive around and come right back on a highway that brings you all the way back through West Shore that brings you all the way back and brings you all the way back. And, and God help you if now you're pushing it. Somebody stay, stay focused. Stay focused. As I began to pray on this matter of focus, the Lord began to show me how detrimental it is to the life of a believer to live a life of focus. Because again, God is in the details. Make a note of that, a mental note, if not a, a physical one. Write it down somewhere. God is in the details. And in the details, he ascribes to you information that perhaps, watch this, can soon become revelation. There are some things, praise God, that God is about conveying directly and some things indirectly. Oh mm, my God. There are some things directly and some things indirectly. Praise God. You know, the, there's a scripture that says, know them that dwell uh, or labor among you in part, right? We can in turn be working, living, dwelling, Amen. Uh, carousing, corralling around people. Amen. In turn, and miss the details about them. Miss what the Spirit is saying. Praise God. What the Spirit wants to illuminate or, or inform us on because we're not as focus. Have you ever engaged a conversation with somebody and they kept nodding their head? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you ask them a question about what you just said and they're like, oh, excuse me, hold up. What, what, what did you say? What's the last thing you said? And then you try to double back and cover yourself. I just want to be clear. No, you weren't even listening. How important it is that you recognize that the enemy does not want you to gain ground. He doesn't want you to have a moment, catch this, a moment whereby you have communion with God. Mm. He wants to repeat a cycle in your life. He wants to have you experience the genesis of life. Watch this. What's the genesis? The excommunication out of the presence of God. The getting beyond the things of God. Getting out and in violation. Oh my God. The moment of distraction. The moment of distraction. Um, I wish I could. Uh, I, I, the, the, this word, I wish, I wish David heard it. The man after God's own heart. I wish David had heard this word, praise God. Maybe then he would have been at battle, but he was distracted. But in his distraction, he found himself, and okay, it was good until he got caught up with what was happening in his neighbor's house. Oh God, when it is that you are more keen to what's happening in somebody else's house, you're already distracted. 
because you're not sensitive in that part to what was, what's happening in yours. And that's all it requires many a times is a momentary distraction to get off course. To get off course. It is of necessity. I'm going to give you some principles so that we don't dwell with just the understanding how of our understanding of how important focus is. I got to give you some understanding also of what causes us to lose focus. One of the things that I realized for me and for many of us in respect to focus is the need for rest. You need rest. Somebody say, I need it. Oh, God. Thank you. Thank you, Spencer. You're the only one telling the truth. No, just... <laughs> you need rest. When you are not at rest, you are not at your best. You are miserable, and the people around you know it. And they pay the price for you not having rest. When you are not at rest or you have lack of sleep, you can easily and please don't put it on the devil <laughs> you know some stuff we make about the devil the devil has been buffeting me and challenging me all week you need rest it is a known fact it's scientific in fact that um, sleep deprivation can lead to a lack of focus here's what scripture says Psalm 3 Verse 5, Psalm 3, verse 5. I'm going I'm, I'm to sniper shot some of these script, um, scriptures just so we can get through them. Psalm 3, verse 5 says, I laid me down and slept. I awoke for the Lord sustained me. Proverbs 3, 24 says, When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Another text. Proverbs 20, verse 13. Love, oh, I'm going to put a pause on this one because this one's going to need a bit more dissection. Amen. So I'm not, I just want you to hold on to it. Proverbs 20, 13. I'll get there in a moment. Sleep deprivation is, 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 is of detriment to us in part. You know it. It is difficult when you've been up all night under the stress or the duress um, and you can't come to that place of rest, how it affects you the next day. We can give you all the B12 shots we want and tell you in turn, drink all the caffeine you can consume. But when you are deprived, when you are exhausted, it's like when I'm hungry, I'm miserable. It's just what it is. It's just what it is. When I get tired, I tell people all the time, if you ever come to me, and I've said it, I probably have not said it since we've been here, so for the benefit of those that don't know me all too well, if you ask me ever a time, how you doing, Apostle, and I say I'm tired, I don't care what you have going on. It would behoove you to be like, Apostle, I call you tomorrow. Because <laughs> if you ask me, or better yet, tell me that you're about to jump off the cliff, I might just say, when you do it, call me, because <laughs> I is tired. I don't become rational. My wife will tell people around me, oh, he's tired now. You can tell because he's getting all loose. People get drunk. When they get drunk under the, the influence of alcohol or other things, they lose their cognitive capabilities. When I get tired, I lose sense of what's happening. Like, look, I'm just, what's, whatever. <laughs> Anything goes. It's just what it is. Somebody know what I'm talking about. <laughs> when you are sleep deprived, catch this, you're losing the capacity to hold on to the tangible. Watch this. It is no wonder, catch this, I heard somebody say this in, in Bible study, and this is important because it's not just for her, it's for all of us, or for certainly many of us in the room. It is no wonder the enemy fights you when it comes to rest. Yeah. 
and fights you. I'm talking about, there's a distinction between rest and sleep. Some people sleep but don't rest. And, and let's be real. The Bible says, guess what? That you are going to have trials and tribulations in this life. I, I, I probably never said this publicly, but I was diagnosed, and I was shocked when I was diagnosed as having sleep apnea. I was like, I thought it was so good that I woke up at 4.30 in the morning. I'd be like, yes! And I can go to bed whenever I want. Until I realized I was awake, but I couldn't focus. And then I started thrusting in the bed and be like, Lord, I don't even know why I'm awake. Even you are not awake, right? Now. <laughs> That's how I speak to him. <laughs> like, Jesus, you ain't, there's no, I'm praying, God, why did you wake me up? And they said, you have sleep apnea. And I said, wow. I said, you mean young me? Yeah, you do. I said, okay, what do we do about it? You got to go through this, sleep study and all of this stuff, go to the hospital, spend the night and all of these things. And I'm like, oh, God. And then put me on the machine and put me through a process. And the moment I start getting a regiment going, what was the, you know, you snore? <laughs> I snore no more. Jesus. When you get, oh, Jesus. It's one thing. Most of us snoring don't even know we're snoring. But when you're snoring and you wake yourself up, I know, I know this seems too deep for somebody. Look, I didn't come to church to be told. Notice the scripture, he laid me down to sleep. Elijah was put to sleep. Man was put to to sleep. Garden, Genesis, Adam was put to sleep. There's, there's such a vital connection to that and our ability to focus. But for those who love sleep, there's a scripture. Proverbs 20, verse 13. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. I just love me some sleep. I can sleep all day. Mm -hmm. Broke and sleep. <laughs> can be related. Here's number next, distractions. I want you to know, the, and, and let's just really walk through this. The enemy comes about to kill, steal, and destroy when he steals you off your sleep, but even when he robs you of the ability to focus, he presents oftentimes distractions. What is, or what are distractions? Distractions are anything that turns your focus away from what you should be concentrating on. You can be in church and distracted. You can be at work and distracted, behind the stove and distracted behind the wheel of your vehicle and be distracted wherever and in any situation. Anything in turn. And the enemy is so, he's so creative about it. But there's nothing new under the sun. He distracts us visually, auditorially or aud audibly is probably the better word, <laughs> the right word anyhow. Cognitively. These are all distractions. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 says this. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overcome you that is not common to man. Let's in, transpose that word temptation for a moment to the word trans, uh, distractions. There's no distractions that have overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted, distracted beyond what your ability. But with the distraction, temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Somebody shout, stay focused. Stay focused. 
The enemy will love to present a distraction to you, if at best. To Samson, it was Delilah. But beyond, watch this, I'd even go further to say Delilah was just one of his distractions. How about pride? You see, when you are given to self-deception, you don't even see you're wrong. You don't even see how far you're gone. When you become self-reliant, I can do this. He kept coming up every time being able to do it. And we can become so common with our abilities that we forget the source. Y'all missed it. Praise God. So common with our gift. So common with the grace that we forget who provides it. Because we're distracted. And catch this, for some of us that are tapped in right now, you need to realize that even success can become a distraction. Oh my God. Woo! It can. The things of this life. Be mindful, be mindful, be careful. For that quick moment, taking your eyes off where you're headed. For that quick moment, forgetting to do what you, what you losing thought of what you need to do. The enemy can caught, get us caught up. This is what Psalm 119 verse 15 says. Psalm 119 15. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. Not only am I going to put my mind to it, but I'm going to ensure that my eyes are fixed. You know, when horses are in a race, in part, they put blinders on. So as to watch this, to not get caught up with the one next to them. To not get caught up with the things that you've passed by. You've got to have your minds fixed. That's why scripture says, set your affections. Set your affections on things above. The enemy will love you getting caught up with what's not working. With what's not happening. While life could be moving. You feel stuck. While you have opportunity before you, you could be, watch this, you could be stunted, staunched, uh, uh, stoic, yes, good word, in, in, in a matter of not moving, halted, stagnant, because you're more caught up in, well, it ain't happening the way it should. Even that can become a distraction. God, help me to stay focused. Anybody in here that's praying, Lord, help me to stay focused. Don't let me give myself over to the distractions. And they come quickly. Selling us stuff we don't need. Having us invest in things that won't even matter. Distractions. Having us give our time over to things that won't profit anything if at all little, distractions. I realized in living, watch this, everything good isn't necessarily God. Oh, that's a whole nother thing. Everything good ain't necessarily God, and everything that looks like, oh, let's put it, back it up this way, not every door that opens is one you should walk through. Sometimes you will get opportunities that come at you. And, it, and in, in investing in that and, and committed to that, it gets you caught off, caught up and caught off guard. And all of a sudden you're going on a tangent. All of a sudden now you're off course and you're trying to figure out how far, when, when did I get, how did I get where I am? And it's because of the distractions. Whenever it is, oh my God, it's just seemingly like the enemy knows when to dial you up. When you're about to, okay, okay, all right, and listen, I'm going to put my time, hey family, listen, I'm going to go study, uh, come six o'clock, six o'clock I'm going to go study, and, and, and everybody in the house knows, but, but the whole world don't know, and then all of a sudden your phone, even technology, there's a sleep time, and you know what most of us are struggling with? What we call FOMO, touch your neighbor, touch your neighbor, touch your neighbor, young people help me out. For young people, somebody, I need somebody, what's, what's FOMO? All right, y'all knew that. Somebody thought I cursed. It just sounded something like, you know, anyway. 
FOMO, the fear of missing out. And so we get caught up with, I don't know what's going on in the world, and what's going on in the world, probably half of it ain't your business. You don't, know, you don't need to know when the next sale is. You ain't got no money anyway. I got mad with Facebook when they started telling me somebody else posted something. I said, I want to know when I post something. I don't care when you post something. Now you're telling me when they post and then go to post. Be like, I don't even need to know this. This is useless information. I'll never use this in my life. <laughs> you got to know what to censor. Here's the next. And I... I, I I don't want to labor long in this, but I want us to really get sensitive because God is doing some new things in this season. And if we're not careful, we'll hold to the old regiment or the old way of functioning in part and miss the behold, I do a new thing. Lack of priorities. One of the reasons we lack focus is due to lack of priorities. You don't even have a goal. Set your affections, here's the goal, on things that matter. Hmm. Watch this, watch this. So, watch this. I, I'm going to say this and I'm going to rub you the wrong way for some of us. Your husband's attitude don't matter to your purpose. Oh, y'all, y'all, watch this. Oh, this is terrible. You mean to tell me he can be ignorant and it don't matter to your purpose? Because you didn't get married to his attitude. We're going, look, I know how to fight. I mean, I, but sometimes we get caught up in the attitude that we miss the message. Y'all notice the man man brings us stuff we don't care to receive. But we know there's something in it for us to get out of it. What if that mailman is your spouse? Don't get caught up in how it was delivered so much so that you forget there's something about truth. There's something about what God wants to do. And watch this. Maybe that person is prophetic, but they don't know it yet. But you're getting caught up with them. You know, somehow you always feel, you always seem to think you know. Baby, I don't know how I know. But this one thing I know, like Paul. <laughs> this one thing I know is what God put on me. Don't get distracted by the temporary that you miss the eternal. Ooh. You truly won't ever know who is in the cut with you until you go through something with them. But if you get caught up in the experience of the moment, you'll abort the purpose we have together. We got to learn to watch this, catch this. This is for our homes. We got to learn how to strive together. Oh God, we, have, we, we got to learn how to fight. We got to learn how to stand our ground. We got to learn how to set our mind a fixed focus. Somebody shout focus. focus. Somebody say stress. Another part of it all. Now, for some of us, if we get our sleep, we, we, we already won half the battle. But stress, here's the thing about stress. Stress often is, for some of us, certain types of stress are induced by fear. And fear, much like worry, fear and faith do not cohabitate. And because we're commissioned to live by faith and not by sight, what does the enemy do by what we see? Much of what we see may not even happen as we see it. Because the things that appear are not, oh God, all right, all right. So we got to be careful of what we're focused on. As much as it is that we are focused, we also have to be careful of what we focus on. 
Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. Is this good helping anybody? I'm, I'm trying to challenge us. Watch this. So when we go out of here and we, uh, watch this, because the battle is not just happening here and now, but it's at the moment you start walking out of this door, all of a sudden now you, you start looking, well, you know, I, I got uh, some stuff to go home and do. I got tomorrow. And, and all of a sudden now you're sweating and, and you're trying to figure out how you're going to make it all happen. And the enemy puts that on you. That stress. But the scripture says in Matthew 6, 34, so don't be anxious about tomorrow. God has already taken care of it too. Yes. Goes on to say, live one day at a time. Can't focus on the here and now and the what God is doing in the moment, missing the details of the here and now, and now worrying about tomorrow. The older I get, is the more vital my ability to keep focus is. Why? Because, catch this, I have much more to lose. Because to whom much is given, much is required. Catch this, catch this. If to whom much is given, much is required, and he's given you more life than your counterpart or the children or others in your life, then what is it that he's still demanding and requesting of you in your senior years? Oh, I'm done now. I'm retired now. There ain't no more for me to do now. I did my part. To whom much given? I made a statement the other day, and I hope nobody got it twisted. But I said, the fact that you're still living means that you have purpose on you. Because the person in the grave is done. This is what scripture says, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Oh God, I need your strength, God. I cannot lose my focus. I cannot lose my focus. I cannot lose my focus. Even your lifestyle matters. How you live. It is because you must do everything, the Bible says, for the glory of God. Even your eating and your drinking, everything matters. The environment you are in matters. Do not be, see, be deceived, the Bible says. What does, what does it say? Bad company corrupts good morals. That's 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Your environment matters. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what is the will of God and that which is good and acceptable and perfect by the renewing of your mind. Every now and then you got to say, Lord, keep my, keep, help me to keep my focus. Lord, keep my mind focused. Keep me focused. Keep me focused. Lord, I can't afford to lose focus. This is too important. Imagine if the surgeon loses focus. Whew. I wouldn't want to be the patient on the bed. What you say? I got this. I don't care how skillful you are. You need your focus. You need to be sensitive to what is happening in turn. I don't know how everybody else just performs and does life. I'm not here to be critical, but the truth of the matter is we all need to maintain focus and the enemy will love us caught up and caught off guard to the things. And do you not know that the Bible says again, for every temptation, he'll make a way of escape. Is it possible that what you're in, if you get caught up by the distraction for the moment, you don't even see the way out, but you're in, watch this, you, 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 you're screaming. You, somebody got to stop screaming. Somebody got to stop shouting. Somebody got to say, say wait, there's the exit. Somebody got to recognize what's available to them. But if we're not, the enemy will love us getting caught up in the, the what's not working. That we miss, catch this, that you may be the solution. Where two or three are gathered, touching. So we're arguing, but we're not touching. And catch this, when we, this is, 
the bedroom chat, right? When we're not touching, we're talking about when we're not connected, all of a sudden now the enemy uses the silent moments. Because if you ever come together in agreement, but we distracted in a moment, we don't even see the enemy. And I'm talking about where I've been. Don't even realize that in, the enemy is trying to get us separated, not connected. But the moment we touch and agree, no good thing will I with. One can chase a thousand, or two can put 10,000 to flight. I, I'm, I'm doing good by myself, but I'm not built to walk by myself. Now, this ain't always going to lead to marriage, but there is some relationships in part that we become estranged to because we see the difference more than we see the opportunity. Y'all with me? Imagine when we get focus. All of a sudden now we build on our strengths, not our weaknesses. Baby, you are a prayer warrior. You go in, baby. I mean, watch this. Baby, not gender. So you're not saying, honey, how come you ain't praying? It, baby, you have the agenda. You have the anointing. You have the grace. Uh, baby, you, you can plan this thing. You are good at date nights. Don't put it on the man. Don't put it on the woman. Some stuff you might be the one anointed for. Don't get distracted by societal norms. They, you know, you should be the cook. You should be the butler. You should be the one that holds the bag and does the budget. Baby, you are anointed for it. Don't get distracted. It's just some stuff we get caught up in. But you got the grace. And then when they do it out of the grace, <laughs> this is not the way I would have done it. <laughs> it ain't their anointing. The way of the transgressor, scripture says, is hard. They try to do it, but it's hard for them to do it. Because they're not grace to do it. My wife said to me, baby, um, I love you. I love your cooking. I said, I'm so glad you love it. I said, I hate cooking. When I do it, it is God. Everything God. Because I don't know what I'm doing. We just had this conversation, did we? I said, she said, what's so difficult? I don't understand what a pinch of salt is. I am logical. <laughs> Tell me how many grains. I can do that. But I've done a pinch before. I want, y'all work within the grace. Work within the grace. I don't want to end up cooking it. Then I don't like it. And the only person I got to blame. <laughs> trying to do what I'm not graced to do. So now I'm working labor intensively. To do or to measure up to what I'm not graced to be. I'm trying to help us stay focused. But if I reside and you know what I'm a good, I'm good at? I'm a good taste tester. My wife says, you eat anything. I said, the only way I'm going to know it is if I eat it first or taste it first. The, at least one time. I said, I'm a good complimenter. This is good. But I already know I am not a cook. I'm taking the stress off. Don't put on a cloak. Don't put on something you're not anointed for. Because then you got the devil on your back saying, mm, I told you, you ain't nothing. You ain't measure up. And instead of you identifying what you're graced for, It's just what it is. I am anointed to drive in my household. I'll leave it there. <laughs> the 
in the name of Jesus. Get back on track. I have tested it. My brother, Weedy, I have tested it. My wife behind the wheel. I'm talking to her. We go from 55 to 35. I stop talking, we go back up to the speed limit. I start talking, we go down. I'd be like, you know what? I'm not going to say a thing so we can get where we're going on time. Baby, I'll take the wheel. You know you're tired. Mm, I want to get there too. <laughs> if I'm going to tell on me, I'm going to... Anyway, praise the Lord. Stay focused. All right. Here's some things real quickly. I got to bring this home and wrap it up. Praise God. Amen. Because I can get caught off guard too. Focus requires a couple of things. Make a note real quickly because we're going to finish this. Praise God. Even if I got to just. All right. First one, make a note. Adjustments. Somebody say adjustments. Focus requires adjustments. Set your affections on things above, right? means to place your mind and thoughts on them, to show favor towards them, and to be affectionately desirous of them. Set your affections. Adjustments. Somebody shout adjustments. My, watch this. My associations and environment may require a change. Adjustments. That's what Psalm 1 was talking about in the first few verses, about connections and relationships. It was about adjustments. So often where you're going, the people around you may not be going there with you. Whoo! Here's number next. Here's number next. And, and I say older you get, because the reality is the older you get, not only do you have the more to lose, but even as you get older, you got to make an adjustment. My eyesight, my eyesight at 20... I started at 9, but my eyesight at 20 is not the same sight at 44. I can see you, but I can't see you. Watch this. And so, as you get older, the enemy would love you to miss the details. So, watch this. You're getting old and you're not seeing how life is changing and how to appreciate the changes. And you're getting older and your kids are getting older and you're missing their lives because you're so distracted. You, 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 you don't got time for them, but you got time for everybody else. And yeah, mama, mama, you got to answer your phone at my play. You got to be tapped in. Does that text matter when I'm the one on cue? Yeah. And every now and then, yes, I'll be nudging you. Get off the phone, baby. Get off the phone. Get off the phone. Get off the phone. Is this a vacation if you bring work with you? Oh, okay, all right. Back up, back up, back up. All right. Let me, let me, let me get back to the word because I'm safe there. Adjustments. Here is the next. A clear directive. A clear directive. What is a clear directive? What I need to do. What do you need to do? You can't, watch this, you won't target or focus on what you can't see. What do you need to do? What? This one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. Reaching for those things which are before. We need, somebody say, a clear directive. Clear Write the vision. Make it plain. Revisit it over and over and over again so you know that you're on track. And catch this, that the people coming with you also know where you're going. So you can avoid, are we there yet? Worse then no vision is a blurred one. Because at least if I had no vision, it said that my other senses increase and become more sensitive. Because I can't see, at least my hearing increases and my sensitivity to what's around me increases. But my blurred vision will keep me thinking I'm seeing what I need to see. And the enemy will have you functioning under blurred vision. 
I don't even know why you're looking at me that way. And I ain't even thinking about you. You are so far from my mind. I'm caught up in my own stuff. But because I give you an indifference in my demeanor, y'all mess, y'all mess, y'all know it's true. Y'all know it's true because you, you talk to your spouse and they say something and you be, are you caught up in, why are you saying it that way? Baby, I, why are you yelling at me? I ain't, I'm just, I'm just talking, I'm just talking. I ain't even said nothing yet. You're having that attitude. I'm sorry, I'm not having, why are you? <laughs> And you walk away, and the attitude, and the attitude, and the argument's still going. I don't even know why they're talking to me like that, who they think they are. And, and they moved on, and they're sleeping. Now you're angry. I can't believe they're sleeping, and they're acting like. Maybe don't forget what I was doing. They didn't do nothing. The devil got that moment. The devil got that moment because you lost clarity. Focus. Focus. Somebody say, Lord. Help me to focus. Can you endure two more and I'm done? All right, two more and I'm done. Understand your capabilities. What you can and what you cannot do. I said it before. Stop trying to do what you're not graced to do. Oh, God. Yes, Lord, but I want to be able to do it. Nothing wrong with it. But the Bible says, desire the sincere, but don't covet. Covet not. I can't, there's just some stuff. I just can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I got to keep my focus. What am I good at? What am I grace for? I got to feed myself. How do I become whole? How do I become complete? How do I remain satisfied by not losing my focus? Because maybe you put a budget in place. Maybe you put a plan in place. Don't think for a moment that you're not going to get opportunities and alternatives and detours and suggestions and solicitations and all such but you got to keep your focus last point it requires a decision choose ye this day who you will serve decision Set your affections. You got to decide whether you're going to seek and aim to that which is above or beneath or below you. Let the Lord fight your battles. You don't even have to fight that. You mean to tell me everybody calling me and everybody need help? But you are not everybody's firemen. Some people need to know how to cry out to the same God you learn to cry out to. And if you're not careful, you'll run to everybody's requests at your own expense. But you need time. Do you watch this? Catch this? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Even the tanker that brings the gas so you can get gas needs gas itself so you can't keep giving out and not get a moment oh god because if you're not careful you lose your focus lord give me something stand if you can lord give me something to tell our elders, our leaders, our groups. People over process. People over programs. Because if we're not careful, we'll lose the soul. If we're not careful, we'll lose our own way.
It's so easy to regress back to what you came out of. Oh God, it's so easy to go back to what you've been delivered from. To regress. God, before you, I couldn't see my way. Then all of a sudden, your eyes, the scales of your eyes have been open. I've been taken away and now you can see. Songwriter said what? I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all the in my way. Gone are the dark clouds that had me by. It's going to be a bright, bright. So you know what he did at the end? He prophesied. <laughs> I see, it's not that I'm ignorant to what's happening, but I see that he is a way maker. I see that he's a bridge. Oh, come on now. I see he's my shield and my buckler. I see that he's a help. Because I cannot lose my focus. God help me. No matter what state I'm in to keep my focus. No matter which way I go to keep my focus, Lord. No matter how bad it gets to keep my focus. Lord help me to keep my focus. So if I got a whatever way If you ever watch, anybody watch boxing? Not, not a whole lot, but you know, enough. <laughs> they teach you how to keep focus. You gotta, no matter how much you're moving, keep your focus. See, when you're not focused, you stunt your growth. God created you to move, but in you moving, he encourages you to keep your focus. Steadfast and unmovable doesn't mean one place in respect to location. It's not in the literal sense, per se. It is commitment to what you commit to do because you're going to get some stuff that wants you to detour and become deterred by and disturbed by and you got to be like look baby we in it for the long haul till death do us part I don't know what is coming but Lord till death do us part Lord it ain't happening the way I have but till death do us part stay focused stay focused you're here this morning and no doubt you've got a lot on your mind no doubt you've got some things you've got to go home to deal with if I didn't preach this word if the Lord didn't allow it perhaps not have gotten it and not just that but perhaps you would have remained where you were every now and then he's got to rub you the right way ah, Lord you mean to tell me this friction is to help me trials really come to make me strong you mean to tell me you're just trying to get me to pray more you're just trying to get me to believe again to not lose sight oh God set my affections on things above set my affections God let me not get caught up with everything around me I don't know about you but I'm praying right now for you and if you feel to come to this altar it's open if you want to come it's open now this is the call if you want to come so if you want to stand in the press you can stand where you are that's fine too but if you feel to come come because sometimes you got to shift in the physical in the natural so that you can gain the proper perspective don't lose focus don't lose focus watch this 
One man lost focus, broke the tablets, and God had to bring him back up and speak to him all over again and give him back the same instructions the first time you wrote it, this time I write it. Because some stuff you cannot surpass. You must go through. Having done all to stand. You got to stand. But you must go through. These are they which have gone through great tribulation. You mean to tell me I'm going to go through some stuff? Yes! It is the refiner's fire. It is what makes you. It is what makes you. Oh God, if you harden not your heart in the day of trouble, if you gird up your loins, if you put on the whole armor of God, if you humble yourself, oh God, you mean to tell me I'm anointed for this? Yes, you are. You mean to tell me I'm called to this? Yes, you are. But stay focused. Oh my God, my God, my God, my God, I've come too far. Somebody shout, I've come too far. Somebody shout, I've come too far. I've come too far. I've come too far. I've come too far. Come too far. I have come too far. told me there are three people that if you would be honest with yourself the only reason you failed is because you lost focus you let everything else get in the way and if you be honest with yourself that's really the problem they didn't grow beyond you. That opportunity, you, you didn't really miss. You just lost focus. But if you can get your focus back, y'all watch this, watch this. Samson lost focus, got distracted. When he got back his focus, you know what he did? He prayed. And in his prayer, he repented, Lord. <laughs> and notice what came. It wasn't about his eyes. What was his greatest strength came back to him. Oh, <laughs> the moment you start praying, it brings things back into alignment. It causes you to see like you've never seen before. Somebody start praying. The moment you start praying. Woo! You mean to tell me when things are going topsy-turvy? Start praying. When you miss the last exit, start praying. Oh God. Oh God, oh God, he that keepeth Israel does not slumber nor sleep. He is awake, he is aware, he is more sensitive to where we are than we know. Whew. Don't lose focus. Don't lose focus. Jesus was about to be crucified. And he had to encourage himself don't lose focus you ain't come here to stay among men your aim is the cross can't afford to lose focus come on the devil now tempting him persuading him to, to turn these stones into bread I can't lose focus because I'm trying to teach somebody in 2023 way back then he was trying through his actions 
to tell somebody in 2023 that they can do it because he did it. God is trying to use you to help somebody in tomorrow if you can get it right. If you don't lose focus. Father Lord, put your hands on your eyes real quickly. Don't let us be blinded to the truth. Let us not be distracted, caught up. Oh God, help us, help us, help us, help us. Wherever you are, oh God, thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord just reminded me through something I read not too long ago. Like a person who rides a motorcycle. Wherever your eyes go, there goes your actions. Oh God, the wherever your focus goes, there goes your actions. Uh, Lord, keep my eyes on you. Lord, keep my eyes on you. I don't care what else happens. Oh God, keep my eyes on you. Lord, I'll look to the hills from where coming my help. My help coming from the Lord. Somebody shout, Lord, keep my eyes on you. Lord, I pray for every person, every visionary, every matter, every husband, every wife. Every person, oh God, Lord Jesus, that says, Lord, I've got purpose and I know it. I've got an assignment and I've got to complete it. There is a call and I've got to fulfill it. Ah, Lord, keep my eyes. Keep my eyes. Keep my eyes. Keep my eyes. My spiritual eyes. Keep my spiritual eyes. Keep me sensitive. Keep me discerning. Keep me, oh God, keep me focused, Lord. Help me, God, not to be deterred, not to be distracted, not to dismiss the part of the process. Oh God, Lord Jesus, the purpose to which you have for me, God, keep my eyes on you. Woo! Shout it in shit. Lord, when I go back to work on tomorrow, help me to execute at a new level. When I step into my house uh, this afternoon, help me to stand in that authority, in that grace, uh, in that anointing, in that devotion. Lord, help me, Jesus, to keep my focus when I get behind that wheel. Let me not get caught up with the noise around me. How do I get back on track? Lord, keep my focus. Oh, na 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 na, see how that it is. Blind Bartimaeus, you shall be blind no more. You shall be blind no more. Your discernment is increasing right now. Your ability to, ooh, ooh, to feel and sense the waves of God's movement is happening for you right now. You are about to move in new realms right now. New levels, new levels. New levels, new levels, new levels. New science in it, Shia. Blessed are the peacemakers. Peacemakers. Don't you lose your sight. Don't you lose your focus. Ay, 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 ay. God. Shine it in the ocean. Don't you lose it, 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 don't
Don't you lose it. Don't you lose it. Don't you lose it. I'm coaching somebody through this. I'm coaching somebody through this. I'm coaching somebody through this. Don't you lose it. Don't you lose your joy. Don't you lose your hope. Don't you lose your faith. Don't you lose your heart. Come on now. Don't you lose. Don't you do. Don't know. Don't don't do it. That's what you got to do when somebody's missed your way. That's what you got to do when somebody don't get caught. Watch this. Don't know which way to go. Don't try to instigate or investigate. Uh, praise God. Encourage. Encourage. Uh, don't you lose it. Don't you lose it. Uh, keep focus. Keep focus. Keep focus. I got a lot going on. Keep focus. Keep focus. Oh, I don't know what to do. Keep focus. Keep focus. Keep focus. I don't know which way to go. Keep focus. Keep focus. Keep focus. Oh, my God. I believe the God we serve will bring things into alignment. He'll bring things into order. All you got to do is keep adjustments till you get things in focus every now and then when he's making the adjustments it seems like it ain't he don't know what he's doing don't it like I just told you that one is out of focus why you keep bringing it back because I want to see if your answer changes <laughs> I want to see if your response changes just because so God will make adjustments sometimes just to see, are you still committed? When things don't show up the way they should, will you still go when I, bro, when I don't do what you think of? It don't make sense. How do I know I'm in a place of adjustment or need of just The whole room goes blank, goes dark. I can't see like I used to see because I'm trying to make adjustments to your vision and all of a sudden the light that matters you know what he says he says for those who have never been in the seat he says look this way look past God is making adjustments to your life. Some of you are going to be nearsighted. Some of you farsighted. Ain't no, watch this. It's still going to come into focus. Even with the adjustment. You ain't no different or any less because you see stuff as they are in the here and now. But somebody still got to be able to see in the there and then and to come. But we all still need Focus. That's why you get irritable when too much noise is around you. It's for nothing else but you've got to pr protect your focus. to lean into the seasons some of us getting older things ain't operating the way they used to but you can't lose your focus because you got a little pain and a little discomfort and it comes yes but don't lose your focus father lord we pray for those that this morning God have determined for themselves that too much is at stake too much is at risk they have desired God Lord to walk steadfast focused 
they have come to know the necessity and how vital it is to maintain focus. And Lord, so give them the courage to dismiss, to silence, to shut down, to, to dismantle what it is that has caused them to lose sight, to get off course, the courage that they need to remain in this fight, to remain in this race. Let them not lose focus. I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna walk away and I'm gonna ask Pastor-elect Marquise to come on up. The doors of the church are, is going to be open to those who would like to connect. I'll be back with you shortly to greet you in, in the lobby or in the auditorium. That's fine. But as he makes his way, um, and the Lord literally just showed me some of you are like sharpshooters. of the indifference oh huh. but you would speak life and you would speak hope and you would speak truth you would see the results because you're a sharpshooter the moment you start speaking as he would desire you to speak watch transformation happen. Bring your word into order. God for what a, a word that was given to us today. So lift your hands with me as we get ready to dismiss. If you are here today and you say, you know, in this moment, I want to make this official and I want to be a I want to become a part of this ministry. I mean, if you've seen some things that happened today that made you want to consider, amen, please join us here at the altar. Our leaders will be here to greet you, amen, to give you more information and instructions as to what is to come and how we can best assist you on your journey. Will you please stand with me all over the building as we dismiss, amen. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this service on today. We thank you for these great people. We thank you for your church, God. We pray that you will bless them as they go about their way and their journey. We pray that they will remain 
focused in this season, that when they leave this door, when they leave this church, Father God, that they will become more focused than ever, Father God, on their assignment, their ministry, their business, what you've called them to as a husband, a wife, as a son, as a daughter. Father God, help us to remain focused in this season, Father. Father God, may your spirit lead us and guide us even as, even as we travel on the road. Keep us focused on the road, Father, even during these crazy times, God. Help us, God. If nobody else is focused, God, help us to remain focused. And Father God, we praise you and bless you in Jesus' name. As we leave this place, but never your presence, Father God, guide us and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are dismissed.